Okay, so it's been about a month since we've done a pod. A lot has happened. But <laughs> yeah. you know how life goes, especially in your 30s. You know, we just haven't been able to sit down and record like this, have we? Ha- like we have in the past. So we're here now. Yeah. Uh, we had an eventful day, though. We went to Game Over Video Games in McKinney. Yeah. Check out a retro store. Yep. Uh, there'll be a video on that coming out soon. Uh, we also went back to the Citadel to look at some more Spearhead stuff. Yeah. That was a whole thing. We'll have a video for that. <laughs> yeah. And shout out to one of our viewers who recommended a deli wine burgers to go eat at next time we were at the Citadel, which we did today. Uh, really good. Yeah, like I I'm a I'm a connoisseur of hot pastrami sandwiches and I when I saw it on the menu I was like we got a good recommendation. This was the right place to go. Yeah, so I'm guessing that viewer was a local. Yeah. Because I walking by the Citadel the first time seeing that place, I never would have thought anything to even go in there and try it. So mm-hmm. but when we walked in there was a line literally out the door. Yeah. So Great recommendation. I had the Philly cheesesteak. I know that's super basic and average, (laughs) you know, just out of all the options you could have picked, but they had it on the menu and I just, I had to try it because no cheesesteak is made the same and it's pretty good. I'd put it probably top four and all time. I mean, I mean, you spent a while up in Philly to even, you know, rank those. Yeah, for work. So (laughs) I'd put it top four. It was good. Best one I ever had was in New Orleans by Liberty Cheesesteak, which they didn't survive COVID, so. No. Rip to number one. You'll never have number one again. Never. That's wild. Yeah, and I say that all these videos will be coming out shortly along with this podcast, but that <laughs> might not be true well, because I have been <laughs> struck by a new illness. <laughs> and I have too. <laughs> that's affecting my life, and it's called The War Within. So yeah. I don't know if I'll actually get around to editing any of these, but we have the content. Yeah, we, we have, have it content recorded. banked. There we go. Yeah, banked. Uh, yeah, so welcome to Aging with 8-Bit. It's the podcast where we talk growing up with games and how they've evolved over the years. I'm your host, Tyler. And I'm calling, guys. What's going on? So, a lot has happened in the past month. Uh, War Within came out. Overwatch got a new hero. Uh, You actually got to play Marvel Rivals, which we talked about on the last couple podcasts we did. Um, My NDA game, or the one that I signed a non-disclosure agreement with, it finally announced. So, and we've been, I've been playing it for a while, and I've kind of been cryptic on the podcast about talking about it. But Shroud is the... um, basically the community director for this game and it's it's called specter divide where you have two bodies and you can swap between the bodies as you're playing so it's a 3v3 game so i played a, i've played a lot of that um you know cs was the game that i picked up over the summer so that was another one and it was kind of cool to be in the background of like a non-disclosure agreement because it was like feeling valued and so there's there's some stuff there that we can talk about for sure um, but I've been struck like I'm back in War Within too. Like I'm back in WoW. Just because the probability of Shroud ever watching this podcast is near zero percent. Give me your honest thoughts on it. Honest thoughts. Yeah. Um, and be be brutal. I okay. don't care. Well, I I Please. hate I hate the movement. So there's like okay. so like when you're running, it kind of feels like clunky. Imagine like you see somebody and, and you're like they're when you say like oh their body hasn't caught or their mind hasn't caught up with their body or vice versa. Like their, their body hasn't caught up with their mind, like how they move. So like you'll be moving and you like look and your body is still like this. And then, so it's kind of clunky there. The gunplay can be hit or miss. Like I'm, I'm no shroud, but I'll hit some shots and I'm like, I had no business like winning that gunfight, you know? Mm-hmm. So there's some like balance issues there that I'm not like, I'm like, that could be a problem. But overall, like the actual playability of the game I really like there's a reason why we like resurgence warzone resurgence because you die you come back into the game if you face somebody that has a good setup or they just can play with their eyes closed all of those things we've run into those people before in shooters you would like if I could just go back again like I feel like we get addicted to that going back and like retrying I don't know have you have you played resurgence or at least seen it 
Okay. Uh, you, so you know who you're talking to. Right. So obviously like when you, you get taken out, you can like, you basically, if your teammates are alive, you can parachute back into the Island after a small timer cook, like countdown. Right. So if your teammates are on the run or if they get a kill, your timer gets shortened. And so what can happen is that like you literally can just respawn on these people, like trying to win that gunfight. So I, that's kind of the, the frame that specter divide takes is like, I, what's cool is like I can put one body on one side of the map and I can put another body that I'm playing in going on the up opposite side. If they start pushing the other side and I'm on the wrong side of the map, I can switch bodies to the side that they're on and start fighting on that side. If I die, I get put back to the other side of the map. So it gives me some opportunities to kind of like play and kind of think of some things or play a certain way, but I like it. I actually do. So overall, you're saying it's a, it's a decent playable game, just some – just some minor kinks that need to yeah. get ironed out. Yeah. Okay. I think w the bigger player base and as they start to fix things, yes. But, I mean, a lot of people, like, they see that Shroud's behind it and they start, like, immediately hating. I, I feel that way, right? Like, when I play games, I had a guy, um, and again, I'm no player as far as, like, shooters. Like, I play to enjoy them. I don't play, I rarely play ranked. Like, I'll play casual, and if we get cleaned out, we get cleaned out. It is what it is. And there's people that are like, yep, I went 21 and 17. I'm uninstalling the game. Okay, like if you're not going to give it a chance, then it's not going to be a good time. So, I got you. I think with what you're talking about with being backed by Shroud and stuff, when you have a name like that attached to your game and just saying even if he had a lot of input on the actual mechanics or the gameplay or if he didn't, I, you know, I don't know. But just putting your name on it, it people are going to expect you to just – it's almost like you're making the next – Overwatch, the yeah. next uh, Borderlands, the next, you know, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, right? They're expecting the next big thing that's just going to take over the gaming world, like shooters, right? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people just put those types of expectations on it because, you know, you're the best of the best. It should be the craziest game we've yeah. ever seen yet. Something nobody's ever thought of before, and it's just revolutionizes the whole industry. I've fudged that word up real bad, but you know where I'm going. I know where you meant with it. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, uh, I'm not saying that's not a realistic expectation to make the next big, you know, GTA, you know, title, but that's just where I think a lot of people will come from. Um, it's just because you know, the ins of out ins and outs of shooters so well that you should be able to create something that, everyone would just, it would blow their minds because it's so good, right? Right. You know, it's creating the next Titanfall, the God of War. You know, those first IP titles that mm -hmm. come out, that yeah. that's all you hear about for months is because the game is so Elden Ring, yeah. right? The way Dark Souls, when it came out, uh, everyone's just talking about it because it's something new and different that nobody's seen before. And it breaks the genre. Like, it breaks yes. the, well, like, it, yes, it has the pieces that make the game it that, like shooter, like you said, it's a shooter, but there are things in the game that we've talked about before that like they break the mold of what is expected out of those games, and that's and that's what like Elden Ring, that's why we have a, a subgenre now of um, Souls like games, right? Yeah. It's because of that. It broke the genre so much that they ha it has to be classified as its own thing because you get addicted to it. Like when you play like. You're a different breed if you play the different, like you've beaten Elden Ring over and over. You know how it like stacks, like the plus whatever. I think Moody was telling us about that, where it's like you'll beat the game and it'll be like a two plus whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Difficulty. Like, I think you're a different breed if you're addicted for it to be harder and harder and harder. But there's a reason why is because that subgenre is there. So. Yeah. Which, like I said, it's not realistic, but also I see where people are coming from. Yeah. Just because in the, while the game's being engineered in development, you can kind of see like, okay, this is going to be the next big thing or this is just another generic yeah. shooter, right? It's nothing, it's not the way uh, Fortnite was or Overwatch or PUBG or, you know, God of War. It's not the next biggest thing. It's just, it's another shooter. Yeah. And, it, and it's fun, but it's not. it's not going to break everyone's brains when it comes out, right? Yeah. Like the genre is kind of like... I think shooters in general are just so flooded right now, and it's just so hard to come in. 
that you're like, you've got to do like be able to switch between two bodies or like you've got to do something that changes fundamentally how we play games for it to really take us in a different directions for sure. Yeah. It had to be the Minecraft of shooters, right? Yes. It had to, it's just so different and it's so, it, it just, it encapsulates everybody that's not in the shooter genre to come play the shooter genre. Like, like if it got me to go buy it, then that's what I would call the next you know, yeah. big, big title. Yeah. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I, I can't, I don't have any comments on it. I'm not going to play it. Yeah. And I, you know, I haven't reviewed any, seen any reviews on, on it. So I can't make any comments about whether it's good or bad, but just based off your description, it just sounds like another generic shooter with some different mechanics than you would in, you know, call of duty battlefield or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you go check it out if you're an FPS person. Yeah. It's called specter divide. Yeah. Probably have fun with it. Yeah. It's not getting me though. (laughs) So, can we? But can we talk about what does have your attention right now? Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> a lot of it, a lot of my attention. Okay, so leading up the past two months, because you've asked me about the War Within, mm-hmm. World of Warcraft, about my thoughts on it. There's a reason I gave up World of Warcraft in the first season of Dragonflight. and that's because I don't get anything done <laughs> if I'm deep in. World of Warcraft like that. It just, it takes over my brain and any of my spare time. It's all I want to do. It's all I care about. You know, I like min-maxing the crap out of my whatever character I'm playing. And it's just fun, you know, mount farming and just all kinds of things. But leading up to the War Within, just seeing the different videos, the beta gameplay, just all that, there, nothing seemed to draw me in really to what, War Within was going to be or what is. Um, Because, like, the hero talents were the new big thing. And I was like, it's cool, but it's not, you know, all right, I'll play it for a couple weeks and then whatever. And probably be done with it. (sighs) No, they got me. They hit a banger? They got me good. Yeah, there's nothing. It's so alt-friendly. It's so level-friendly. Uh, the hero talents, even on the boring side, so I main a survival hunter, okay? And I'm going to main it the whole until I quit playing The War Within, which I don't even know because I'm I'm hooked in deep, so I'll, I can't even say when I'll stop. Right. Um, and that's all I want to play is that survival hunter. Um, like, uh, it has two hero talents, Sentinel and Pack Leader. Sentinel's cool, doesn't change really anything. It just adds a little extra effect to one of your spells, your wildfire bomb. You know, does a lot of damage. It's AOE. It's really cool. Pack leader could be the most boring <laughs> hero talent in the whole game, and it might be because it literally does nothing different except make you use kill command more. And I think they've already put out a patch note for kind of changing some of the talents, the way it works, to not make you press kill command so much. Right. But it's the most bland, dry, boring <laughs> hero talent I think there is in the game like because it doesn't change anything aesthetically it's just you, you press kill command more and it hits harder right uh, but it bangs really in 1v1s yeah in like PvP yeah I've watched some p- some of your PvP yeah, if it goes straight 1v1 PvP and you're single target spec to the survival talent tree with pack leader it bangs people and it like I don't know where the damage comes from <laughs> Because it's really just buff and kill command so much. And there's nothing exciting about it, but it does seeing the numbers go up like that and just deleting people. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but besides the, the hero talent aspect, just the, the zone itself, which I wasn't excited for at all. Uh, it, it got me. Yeah. I think cause uh, hollow fall, it might be the best zone they've made in World of Warcraft history. It's so good. Well, and I saw a little bit of it. So if you get, so you guys know, I just to give you a little bit of background. I am a wild WoW newbie. I got in because of mount farming, which we'll talk about here in a second. But um, I had a level ten ele- uh, elemental shaman, and Tyler took me to go like farm levels 
Um, the what, pre-patch event. Pre-patch event. There we go. So we were like farming levels and trying to get that done. And then I realized I had a coin for to boost a character to 70. So obviously did that. And or to 60, did that. And then I've just been playing. And even like just getting back into the game has been like the end of Dragonflight and like the excitement. And then I get to watch people in our Discord. Oh my God. Like it's just beautiful. Like it's, it's, you truly feel like this is an, a, an expansion. You're paying for something. Does that make sense? Like Dragonflight felt like that. Like, yes, it was an extent, I mean, an expansion, but War Within truly feels like, hey, we have listened to our community. This is like starting from ground one or ground zero, right? And then going down, I guess you could say. But really trying to balance like game mechanics and taking care of the community. I loved it. Like I'm, I'm, I cooked in and I'm, I've watched y'all play like 3v3s and other people play the story that I haven't even got to play a part of yet. Yeah. And it's like just exciting to see that. So it's like, I love those core memories of games for sure. Yeah, and they they crushed it on the zones because half the zones or majority of the zones are actually underground, but you don't feel like you're underground. It's weird. Yeah. Like I said, Hollow Fall, uh, Hollow Fall is probably the best zone they've ever made in World of Warcraft. And that that's coming from a lot because you're competing with a bunch of Wrath zones. Uh, not Outland. Outland sucks. But a lot of classic <laughs> zones, you know, that you kind of grew up with playing. And yeah. this is kind of... It's the new kid on the block, so it's you're not beating old Grizzly Hills. That's a that's a staple <laughs> miss, you know, memory bank. Screw Grizzly Hills. Nobody cares about it. It's a dumb <laughs> zone anyway. Ho- Hollow Fall is the new cool thing. Like yeah. it's amazing. It's it's just so good. And it looks really good. Yeah, like, that, that's like, the thing. Even so I don't know who was streaming the other night, but even streaming, like I think the highest Discord goes is twelve something. I think so. Someone in our Discord has the upgrade, the Nitro. So they do, I think they can do 1440. But, but when I'm streaming, it's 720p all day. But it like any, any stream that I've like seen of it has not looked bad. Yeah. It lo- fundamentally looked just looks amazing. Somebody was like, right, they were riding their, their Griffin mount like around just to like show us. And they were talking about the, the big light up in the big corner. Old crystal. Yeah. And so, that was, and they were just flying around and just talking to us. But it's like even moments like that, like you're you're just fundamentally just enjoying the game, like yeah, they where gave, you're at. They gave the crystal zone, which kind of sounds bad, like doesn't, but yeah, whatever. They gave the crystal zone a sense of scale that's hard to do because it feels just the way they have everything placed. It feels you're in almost in an entire world by itself while underground. But you're in one zone. Yes. So it's just, I don't know. It has this weird just feeling when you're in there. You're mm. like, oh, I could spend four days in here and not see everything. That's not true, but, I, you know, that's the feeling you yeah. get. You know, I could spend a week in here and not. It's vast. Like, it the feels part. the yeah. f- vast feeling, if you will. Yeah, it's almost something out of, El- you would see an Elden Ring mm-hmm. or, you know, Lord of the Rings or, you know, something on the, on the longs of that scale, you know. Something crazy you'd see at a Hunter x Hunter or some weird, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I got you. Some landscape that doesn't make sense in your brain, but it's here. And yeah. I don't know. It's I'm back in deep into World of Warcraft. <laughs> That's basically where I was going with all this. Well, I, like, I knew you were when I call you, because you used to, guys, like, I would call Tyler um, any given day. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm editing this video, or, like, I'm I'm working on this script for this other video or whatever, right? And now I'll call him, and sometimes he doesn't answer my call in the yeah. first ring. And then I'll call my sister, and he, she's like, I'm like, hey, is Tyler around? Because I have, like, a, a YouTube question for him. Um, and she's like, yeah. And then she'll come in here, and he's I can hear him taking off his headset, like, what's up? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, dude, sorry that you're gaming. Didn't mean to bother your session. But Yeah, so as, as regarding our channel, it's not good. <laughs> because I need, I need to... That's the reason, that's legitimately one of the reasons I gave up WoW is to have more free time to do stuff that I want to work on as, you know, I'm calling it a hobby right now, but our YouTube, our podcast channel, plus my own like anime channel, it's stuff yeah. I want to work on and you only have so much time in the day, especially yeah. during the week. So I gave up the biggest 
um, source of time that was being sucked away from me, and that was wow. Yeah. Know? And I gave it up for all of Dragon Flight, so you're going to say two years. And it literally took one little hit. And it was, <laughs> and it was pre-patch. It wasn't even the... <laughs> which, okay, I didn't buy the early access, by the way, and I don't care if you did either. Whatever. You spend your money however you want to spend your hard-earned money. I don't give a shit. You, yeah. you know, if you want to play the early access, go for it. <laughs> I blame because all my hatred goes towards Blizzard for mm-hmm. even doing it in the first place. Because there was a lot of, I don't want to say predatory, but just shitty yeah. business decisions that went into the early access. Not only, I'm getting worked up. He's, he is fired up right now. Not only <laughs> did they put out the early access on Friday, uh huh, right? So it's going into the weekend. Uh, so that's when you have all the time to play. Right. Majority of the people is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the game comes out Monday on the 26th. So you're like, oh, I got to buy the early access. I can play all weekend. I can be a vegetable. I just sit in front of my PC. You know, this is this is Wrath release all over again. Mm-hmm. You know, 29, 20, 2009, baby, don't care. I'm n- Don't call me. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not moving. I'm playing WoW. <laughs> that was kind of that feeling you got from everybody. Right, mm-hmm. and so they put the game out, the early access out on a Friday, and the actual game came out on Monday. So that right there already gets you to want to buy the early access. You want to spend the extra forty dollars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I didn't, I don't know the tiers, so we'll get into that. But go ahead. If, if they would have reversed it, if they would have put the game out just normally on Friday, so everybody could just play it. Yeah. You know, the peasants that didn't shill out the extra 40, 50 bucks for your, you know, grand package mm-hmm. for the early access, uh, they could play it on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, you know, have all weekend to just be a sweat, right? Which is what everyone wants to do when you get back into WoW. Mm-hmm. And would have put the early access out on that Wednesday. So the three extra days were Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the game came out Friday. Wouldn't care. Right. Because I wouldn't have much time to play it anyway. But they didn't do that. They did it purposely to put it out on a Friday so you'd spend the money to play it on the weekend when you had more time and on a Monday, (laughs) which didn't even go live until 5 p.m. So you had to wait all day to actually play it. If you, you know, you're one of the peasants that didn't shill out (laughs) the extra coppers to buy the (laughs) expensive version. And then with the rush of all the new people coming in, which I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and pretend. I'm living for this right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here. That. I know I've been talking for a while, but. No, it's okay. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know the first thing about updating servers or keeping servers like going <laughs> on a live I know where this is game, going. right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not an IT guy. You, it's it's like an IT guy if he was trying to explain all of this to basically a potato. That's me. I'm the potato, and the <laughs> IT guy is basically like. You can tell me whatever words you wanted to. And I'll just be like, okay, sure. I don't know, you know, how it actually works or right. how game updates actually work, especially with something as big as WoW. But they've been going at this for 20 years. They should have something <laughs> figured out by now. Because on Monday, it was impossible to almost do anything for like the first two days, especially with the auction house. <laughs> So I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying tinfoil hat that that was planned either. Yeah. So like, oh, next time maybe you'll 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 learn and you'll buy the ex, the early access, or Daddy Blizz is gonna shut you down the first few days. You know. Yeah. That's on you, not on us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying they've had 20 years to figure out the servers and the realms and the updates and all that. Why was it shut down for, like, basically garbage for the first two to three days? Right, it's running yeah. fine normally now. I know there's an influx of players, but you're a multi-billion dollar company, and you've been doing this since basically I was in the second grade. Figure it out, you know. <laughs> it, it's time for you to get this to run smoothly. Well, and especially when you know, even, okay, let's say take, taking the ugliness out of the pre-patch, you should know by the pre-patch how heavy the hit is going to be on Monday. So if you delay the, you get what I'm saying? Like if you delay the hit, I mean, if you delay the release of the game, then you should definitely know, hey, this is going to be X, Y, Z, whatever, right? 
Um, and that's frustrating because there's a lot of games that I've gotten into that are like that. Like the beta will come out. You know what the player base is going to do for the most part. RIP Concord. But anyways, that's the PS5 shooter that has 675 players playing. Oh, right I now. saw that. Yeah. I saw that post. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, when you release a beta or whatever, you kind of have an idea. And I think you should have some kind of framework or groundwork set up so that you know you can handle it. You know, it's just frustrating because you we do. I mean, like I spent money on the game. Well, what is it like sixty five dollars to play the game? You know? Wow. Yeah. Uh, Fifty bucks. Well, t- plus the base. Well, no. And I didn't have. Um, oh, you're I didn't have my subscription. subscription. OK. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I mean, take that out of it, but whatever. Um, and so it was like coming into all of that and then hitting the issues it would not be fun. But I'm like, I say stuck in Dragonflight. I'm enjoying Dragonflight right now. And kind of mount farming along the way. Because that's kind of the last part as we kind of get into that. The final piece is like mount farming and like what that, what has been, and we'll get to it. But what is the biggest thing you want to search for in this new thing? Just one more thing. Go ahead. And then I'll answer your question. Um, Another thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way with, what they're kind of doing with this expansion is so at the beginning, even when the pores were finally allowed through the floodgates <laughs> and they got to play the game. Yeah. Um, uh, leveling from 70 to 80 was really fast. And if you were, uh, between the levels of 70 to 75, if you went into a dungeon, you would crush everything. Like you would do millions and millions of DPS. It was just, you'd one shot everything. It was, it was ridiculous, but it was also kind of fun. If you're that, if you're the level seventy, and the level eighties and seventy nines aren't doing anything, like the, on the on the details meter, like there was, there was you, and then there was nobody. Is basically how it went. You were solo in that place. That's crazy. Yeah. So that scaling's messed up. Whatever. Who cares? Shortly after this went on for two to three days, maybe, and Blizzard already went and patched it, or is going to patch it. So they kind of nerfed the leveling aspect from 70 to 80 when a lot of people who played the uh, the early access got that extra bonus and got to zoom up to 80, right? Mm-hmm. So they have all their alts and their main leveled. Like, and, you know, they're working on alts of alts. They might not even play for another year, right? Right. But the people just coming in, they don't get to experience that like that. They got to do like slower leveling than everybody else. It kind of takes away the experience from them. Yeah, you should have just left it alone. Yeah, yeah. If like if it's busted and the scaling's weird, who cares? Whatever. It's like like not anybody cares about leveling from seventy to eighty anyway. As long as it's balanced at eighty, that's yeah. all that really matters. What, like, what does the plus end look raid like? and you know PvP? As long as that's good. Yeah. And like world like solo stuff, as long as that's good, then you're fine. Who cares about the getting to eighty? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so and maybe the journey, but but that's yeah. another thing where they'll be like, well, next time you better get that, you better you know shell out a couple more pennies for you know the deluxe version so you can get in with the good stuff. Yeah, and it's yeah. like they, it's another carrot to hang out in front of you. Yeah, you yeah. shouldn't have been working at Target. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it yeah. it, it kind of had that feeling. Yeah, it like takes the enjoyment out of like yeah what it, your company was it based deflated on. a lot of people's bubbles. Yeah, um, but. Anyway, to answer your question, um, just the way I've always loved Survival Hunter, but it's always had this weird kind of iteration where sometimes it's good, like the damage numbers are really good, mm-hmm. but the play style felt weird, and other times where the play style felt great, but the damage was bad. So it's it's almost it's. One or the other doesn't make it fun because mm-hmm. it's like it's like yeah it does a lot of damage but it doesn't just feel it doesn't feel good to play it feels weird like I don't feel like a survival hunter right right and then other times I think in rare it's like rare expansions like maybe mop is either mop or cataclysm or survival's like oh it feels amazing both ends yeah so woo <laughs> going into uh, the war within. That's what got me is I went back. I was I was convinced. I was like, I'm going to play Wind Walker because that's what I played in uh, Dragonflight at the end of Shadowlands. I was like, I love Wind Walker. Like, it's all fun. 
Uh, but then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try and just level up another survival, see how it's feeling. Because I heard nothing but, like, negative news about it, so I was kind of bummed out. Started playing it. I was like, this feels amazing. And that's what got me. Yeah. And that's kind of all I care about right now. I'm like, playing survival. That's all I want to do. And then, like, so the mount farming, the Mythic Plus, the PvP, and the raid, that's all extra. Yeah. Just my favorite class feels good to play. And that's and that's that's what's getting me. That's what has the deep yeah. hooks of you wanting to play. Yeah. So I feel like a survival hunter. Like, all right, it feels <laughs> yeah. good. Which I mean, and that's what I was saying. So you, we were going through all the classes, and I didn't know where to go. And you suggested elemental shaman. Best suggestion you could have ever said. Like I've never truly understood. And again, I'm an infant when it comes to WoW. Yeah. But truly, in that like rolling the key binds and like knowing how to play and your cooldowns and stuff. I've never so I played I played a hunter before kind of probably copying after you, but I never truly understood like I was just oh this does damage oh this does high damage you know and there wasn't like I wasn't comboing anything or like understanding like how to truly chain things together. Elemental shaman completely changed my view. Like yeah. it's boom 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 boom. You know what's I know what's going on. I know like I can drop in. I can do missions and and so it's just. It's this cool, like, concept to see happen, for sure. Yeah. And they bang. That's yes. the be- most important yes. thing. They smash, like, in PvP and in uh, PvE. So you can't really go wrong. Um, and then, plus, like, and if you do switch to, like, enhancement, like, they just got a bunch of buffs, or they will next Tuesday, so it could be good. Yeah. They're even better, and then... Resto is always, it's another one of those weird specs. Sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's not good. <laughs> yeah. It just yeah. kind of depends. It's just the problem with shamans in general is why I think a lot of newer players stay away from it is because there's so many key binds you have to keep track of. And if you're like freshly coming into WoW, having, you know, 30 different spells, you need key bound to your mouse and your, your keyboard. It doesn't feel great. Because yeah. you're just kind of fumbling everywhere. And you just, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Whereas how in like Overwatch, you got what, four buttons to worry about? Five yeah, buttons? I mean, it's five plus all your ult and yeah. whatever, yeah. So it's just like going from something that's like six to eight keybinds to 30, yeah. five plus keybinds. It's kind of weird. Can ruin your whole feel of it. But yeah. I mean, I mean, a newbie like me and I'm pulled in. And Dragonflight did that. Like, I guess the, the, the ramping and... Really, I've been, I played more on my own than I have, like, when you were, like, kiting me or, like, pulling me through different levels. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hop on the dragon and we're going to go. Yeah, yeah, like, I've played more solo than I have ever played with me and you playing at the same time. Um, and it's been an enjoyable experience. It's just been brand new, like, knowing what's going on and what I'm doing and actually caring about it. Like, it just, again, they've hit the nail on the head and it's super exciting. Plus, I was going to tell you, since you're big into mount farming, there is a mount farming Discord that's really big. Uh, can't remember the name. I'll tell you afterwards. Sweet. Um, uh, but it's it's kind of linked everywhere. The nicest people are in there. There's, like, no one's no one's a dick. Yeah. Like, they get it. They're yeah. there. and they're, But there's sweats in there, too. So you got to, yeah. you know, there's somebody waiting in there for a mount for, you know, nine hours. <laughs> you know, and they'll send out an alert. They're like, hey, you know, this – so-and-so popped up, you know, I'm making a group right now. And then, you know, is just say he gets it or doesn't get it, whatever. He'll just go back sitting there for eight hours. Like, doesn't care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There are people like that. They're real chill. So I'll, we'll go find that later. Nice. Because there's a lot of rare mounts you're probably going to be looking for or yes. mounts you don't even know about. And those people will help you, will help you get it. Like, if you want the time lost, if you go in there. Someone will in there will, like, invite you to their group to where it's like, oh, it's it's up right now and we'll go get it. So they're all cool. Yeah. Let's go. So we'll definitely need to check that out. Yeah. Um. Just to get off WoW. Yes. Because that's going to hurt my brain. Uh, You tried Marvel Rivals. And yes, We talked I about did. that. How was actually playing the game for you? Was it enjoyable? And how would you compare it to Overwatch? Better, better than Overwatch. Not as smooth as the gameplay. The reason, and it was something, something that I said at the beginning is that they got me because of the Marvel characters. Like they can literally come out with a skin. We're like, Hey, we're using this comic book cover, so on and so forth. And then that's the skin that we're going to use. 
and it gets me every time. And so that has been the fun part because they'll throw in these skins for you to unlock, and it's just like a rarity of whatever. Super fun. Gameplay is kind of clunky because it is in beta, and yep. my graphics card is a 2070. So they, with a beta, I think with a game of that scale, the higher, the more higher end cards are going to do better at the beginning stages because they're a lot of their like rigs for building the game are higher end, so it's easier to. They're not like tearing down or tearing down. I don't know what the actual term is where they're like suiting it towards those lower end rigs like I have mm-hmm. to where it works, but I'm able to play and I do feel like I'm I, like the abilities are awesome and they have like a really cool thing. So like I'll just give you an example. If one person on my team is Rocket Raccoon and I'm Groot, we have this unlocked ability that wouldn't be there if we both were playing those characters mm-hmm. that where like Rocket can run up and jump on me. And I'm like a shield tank, and he literally, it's unlimited ammo shooting from the top of group. Is it true they made, um, what's his name? I'm drawing a blank. Um, Dr. Strange. Is he a tank? He is a tank. Why? I don't know, but he is, he's, he's a massive mover. I already hate the game. He's a, uh, like a group, um, so you know how like Reinhardt, if you're familiar with Overwatch, you know how he's like the big team. Well, he's like the big team shield. So he can help you move from point to point and kind of soak up a lot of damage. T- uh, Strange isn't like a damage soaker, I would say. But what he is or what he does is he can obviously like make his portal and hop you from side to side. But he does have a cool ability where you can like hot swap between spots and kind of be kind of flank the other group and stuff like that. That's fun. Yeah, that's cool, but <laughs> there's literally nothing about him is a that screams to me tank. I hate the game already. It's uh, I'm my I'm deflated from anything about <laughs> Marvel. Right now, um, wouldn't it make more sense? He's like the ultimate sorcerer. And yeah, I don't want to say the ultimate sorcerer in Marvel, but just as a sorcerer, he's up there, right? Yeah, in the uh, hierarchy of magic users in Marvel. Yeah, I mean. Depending on which series you're talking about, you yeah. can get real crazy. But wouldn't it make more sense for him to be an Ana type character to where he kind of flies in the background and just nukes people? Yeah, I would. Right? I could see that too. Like that makes a lot of sense. And I would put Iron Man at more of a tank than Doctor yeah. Strange, right? Yeah, but I mean, they've got Iron Man as like a ranged DPS, and then um, they just added T'Challa, which is he's going to be pretty. He's a melee. DPS. Are you sure he's not a healer? Well, he could be. So, I, who is the healer? There's a healer that it's like you wouldn't guess is a healer. There's some. Oh, it, uh, it better not be Loki. No, it's Adam. It's um, it's just Adam. I don't know what else he's called. He's all gold. Yeah, yeah. He okay. he's like Mercy. From, okay, it's very weird. You can cocoon. So if you see somebody dying, you can put a cocoon on them. And then they can revive themselves right there. You know, it's like hatched from a cocoon from the gold people. Yeah. And I'm Did they like, use Adam over Captain Marvel? Yes. They, so she's not even in the game? She's not in the game yet. Okay. They have like a whole like slotted game to come out. And I know we only have a little bit of time, but I wanted to, because it just reminded me you said that, and I don't know why it triggered in my head. Oh, because we were thinking of which. Path of Exile 2 comes out November 11th. That is going to be my vice. I've literally been waiting on this game for years. Um, and I will say, I, I, a year ago, I was having a conversation about Diablo 4. But now Path of Exile 2 has like started to release some stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to know life the game for sure. But talking about Marvel Rivals, sorry. Got to go all over the place. They're, they have a list of characters that are coming out. I know Adam is the new one, and T'Challa is the newest character that just came out for people to get into the game. Um, but at release, I think it's like 30-ish characters that'll be at release. So there's okay. still room to add her, and so that could be. Um, but I think they're going with things that are... From what I've seen, it's like, what what are relevant need to be careful with relevant characters. What are characters that they can release these like funky skins for? And people are going to be like, I want this game. 
because yeah. it's going to be free to play. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like Iron Man, that's tried and true. And if you release the Mark One, then the Mark One skin, everybody's going to be in. Like I want a steampunk Iron Man. Yes. Yeah. So I'll ask. Okay, I'll ask you one more question, and then we'll wrap it up. But no, this, you're good. This is relevant to Marvel Rivals and Overwatch. So in Overwatch, they just released the new character or the new hero. What was her name? Um, whatever. Anybody that plays Overwatch 2 knows what I'm talking about. Oh, but, um, the healer, the new healer. I haven't even gotten to play. I've seen it. Okay. Where, like, our buddies on our Discord were playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, whatever her name is, or he, I don't know what it is, but for Overwatch 2 to compete with Marvel Rivals, do you think it's good enough to release a new hero, just say every month or every two months, to keep people from playing Marvel Rivals or over Overwatch? I think or will they need to do like a lot more to keep their player base contained in the you know Blizzard universe instead of going over to Marvel? I think they would have to like, and this is unpopular opinion, but this is my opinion, as far as someone that like sweated Overwatch the first one, mm -hmm. or just Overwatch in general. Um, I think they would almost have to tear down the game and say, like, hey, we didn't deliver on these pieces. Here's what we're going to do. Boom, 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 boom. And I think it keeps a lot of people. Pl like, So what I mean is, like, map redesign, like, quality of life things. Whether Because one of the big things for Overwatch 2 is, like, you had a storyline of your character that you mained. And as you leveled up that character that you mained all the time... You unlocked abilities that you got to pick what their classification was. That was one of the biggest things everybody was like throwing chairs out of windows, flipping tables because it was like, whoa, wait, wait. you're telling me if I play, um, <laughs> pick your poison. I'm just, I was going to say, well, you say Reaper all yeah. the time. I was going to say Reinhardt, but if let's say I play Reaper all the time and his one ability is the shadow, shadow guns where he moves around in a circle, uh, death blossom and he just does everything mm -hmm. right and then and or he has a different ability. And I get to pick, like I get to choose based on my game style. Everybody was so excited. The game comes out and they're like, hey, yeah, we're not going to be able to make that possible. I mean, you're in the game now. And I mean, you're playing, you, you're enjoying it. But yeah, we're not going to be able to achieve this. Okay. You literally like lost so many people. Like come back, take it on the chin and just be like, it is what it is. Um, we failed at this point. We're going to give it our best. Like I would, I think, I think the player base would stick around to see if they said, Hey, we're going to try this with a pool of 10 characters. Yeah. Let us what you, I guarantee you either players are going to come back and, or they're going to have a player base. That's going to stick around and just watch like everybody wants to see the fight. You know, how good the fight's going to be is going to be what it's going to be. But that part they need to do and they need to be you 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 would have to be lying to me to tell me that they don't have a storyboard of a hundred characters that they're like hey we should you know this is the kit we're going to use for this character and this is their lineage and this you know what i mean like they yeah. have that already so instead of like trying to string it along and be like every six months hey we're trying to fine tweak the game cool the reason and i'm like I understand League of Legends, the community sometimes can be toxic. Getting into League of Legends is a headache. But the reason why is I there's a roster of like 100 characters to play. Yeah. If, I, if there is something that I truly like, it may not be meta, but I'm sure I could play a casual game with that character. And they have like, what I think his league has been relevant is yes, they have new characters. They kind of break the game and they have to go back and fix it. But I can play a Volibear before Volibear got updated, which you may not know who that is. Is a lightning, is basically a lightning um, Nordic polar bear, right? With lightning abilities and so on. You can give, you can give me a thousand guesses. Never really guess that. Well, before he got updated to where he basically rechanged his kit and his look and all of that, he literally, like, I could play a game and it was broken because it was based on the old kit that he had and everybody was like, oh, I need to play this meta kit or this person because they have this kit or whatever. And Volibear could stop it because you weren't planning or playing for that. So League was still relevant like that because I could truly play what I want to play, the items and blah, blah, blah. And I know Overwatch doesn't have that, and I know that's kind of getting deep into it. But what I'm, my whole point is there's a vast roster of characters for you to play, 
and I get to choose what my story is, not you telling me, hey, here's 10 characters, and we'll release one every six months. Good luck. Blizzard's just like, but look, we got Diablo. Yeah. Four, right? And or it's within, gross. you stay over here. Are you heard of Hearthstone? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you might get something in Overwatch. You're not. You're, yeah. We're not giving you shit else for playing yeah. Overwatch, but we got we got this over here. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, it was. I will say this has been. This is like home. I know this is kind of weird, but this is home, and I'm gonna we're gonna try to stay more on it. But literally, I mean, I'm at home. But this is we truly enjoy it and do this, and this is kind of like my node. To the 148 or 47, wherever you guys are, subscribers. Yes. Thank you so much. Like, you have no idea what that... It literally, from the 100th to the... Or from the 1st to the 10th to the 100th to the 147th, you guys have caused me to call Tyler at 2 o'clock in the morning yep. and say, oh my God, we have... We have... T like, I don't even know 20 people is what I would tell him. And then I was like, I don't know 45. And now I barely know 100 people, like... There's 147 of y'all that are like tuning into our like our media and like hopefully appreciating it. Like, please comment. You know, like, don't like it. I we we want the like grittiness of what this channel is. Yeah. Um, because we're two dudes that enjoy making a product for you guys. Because we would be having these conversations anyways. We just want to you know kind of have a round table with you guys and pull y'all in. So thank you so much. Like from the bottom of my heart, you guys have no idea. This is a labor of love or passion work for sure. Um, and you caused me and Tyler to hang out for the plus side of eight hours today to make this content. But truly, like, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and with that, uh, find your friends, find your family, play some games, make some memories, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. I'm just, I'm just kidding. But no, it's um, in the grand scheme of things, like uh, passing 100 subscribers in YouTube, it's nothing. It's a blip yeah. in an ocean of content creators, right? But to us, it's a big deal. So yes. shout out to all our subs. Yeah. All the viewers for all the thumbs up. We appreciate it. You guys have truly no idea, and I know this is going to be a tangent, and I hope you guys see the, the end of part of this. And if you've skipped through this whole podcast and you catch the last five minutes, that like you truly have made an effect on my life or like on our lives for sure. So thank you guys again. Yeah, let's play WoW now. We can finally get a – Woo, Mount Hunt. Right. See you guys.